Welcome to this week's edition of Pit Stop. With me, Jakob van der Merwe. I'm joined by Mark Jones and by Shaul Bosch. Um, not a surprise, but it still kind, kind of feels weird that as of the end of March, Shaul, um, there are no bucky half-tunners, as we like to call them, officially on the market with the discontinuation of the Nissan MP200. Is that right? Am yeah. I just dreaming? No, it's it's over. It's been 16 years since it um, arrived as a replacement for the Nissan um, 1400. And yeah, the final one rolled out of Roslyn on uh, the 31st of March. And that effectively ends all of the, the half tonners, one of the best segments at one point. It's over. Uh, Mark, can you remember at one stage how many we had on the market? I mean, uh, we can say Bantam, the obvious ones, but I mean, you need two hands to count all of them. Well, exactly. You had a Bantam. A Mazda Rustler. I had a Corsa. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was... That little, became the GM the, utility. The, the Opel Utility, yeah. The VW the, Caddy. Yes. Uh, Proton Arena was there for yeah. a little while. Uh, the, shall we not forget the Datsun 14 or 1500? Yeah, the well, iconic. That, that eventually became the Nissan 1400, yeah. But that was the granddaddy of them. I and mean, the Fiat Strata. Yeah. So, so, so what, what's the plan now? Uh, for, for them, for anybody, is, is that like the end forever of half -tons? No, it's not. So what's going to happen is that um, by 2027, there might be a new one coming out. Um, it's already been um, sort of approved, but it's going to be a Renault product. Now, last year, Renault launched a new half tonner called the Niagara, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, as a concept vehicle. That's got nothing to do with the Oroch that never made it to market no, last. There is a relation to the Oroch, so... We all thought that the Uruk was coming here and whatever, and we all know it got delayed and so on. So the Niagara will eventually, ultimately, replace the Uruk in South America because the Uruk is so dated, it's based on a first-gen Renault Duster. So um, Uruk, um, the one we saw at Nampo last year, um, was a facelift um, version that was unveiled in South America. That will most likely be the final one. There was reports of a second generation Uruk, but that now seems to have fallen flat with the Niagara. So that arrives in 2027 based below the Renault Alaskan, which was the Nissan Navarro's twin, which we, everybody was making a brew. Oh, we're going to get the Alaskan. That never, that never mm -hmm. happened. So um, Nissan has confirmed with their um, uh, partnership with um, Rera, with their alliance with Renault, there will be a Nissan badged version of the Niagara, but only in 2027. Uh, in South Africa? Uh, for the moment, it will be in South America. So the Renault version will be made at the, um, the Santa Isabel plant in Argentina, which is a Renault factory, where they also make the Nissan, what's called Frontier, but it's called the Navara here. They make that. So, so, so in other words, that's, there's no, no confirmation no, we're geez. getting. A, that, no. That, that's, uh, uh, Mark, but just on half tunners, um, it, it, talking to a lot of uh, big players, manufacturers in the, in the industry, um, of late, it's it's kind of amazing how that kind of space has been occupied by some other, can I say unlikely models, but obvious models. Let's say some people move to, a, a if you can't get a half tonner, a Suzuki Super Carry, a Suzuki Eco. I mean, if you look at um, um, Hyundai with an i10 cargo, which is basically they've taken out the rear seats and a lot of people that, let's say delivery kind of set up, commercial purposes obviously just put a few boxes in there and 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 there you go and then obviously uh single cabs of a one tonner um if the price is right then why do you need a half tonner well there was that sort of commercial side i get it but i think if we look back if we forget we own them the people that bought them i think a massive percentage of those sales the people that just wanted this cute half tonner kind of vibe, they came in nice spec level, if you remember. They sort of got basic spec, nice spec. So you had, you had a kind of a cool little half ton bucky. Um, I think a lot of them were like leisure kind of vehicles at one stage. And those poor people have either moved into hatches or small SUVs. Um, the the one ton market, the carry kind of market, the R10 market, sure the commercial guys took that over, but... I think it's the the leisure guys that miss this the most. That they're the ones that say, "Please, bring back a half tonner." That sort of goes back to the youth of 
all the cool stuff. The commercial guys have got lots of options now, so I don't think they they certainly don't care and they won't drive the numbers. If you look at what they did with the top of the range versions of the um, Opel Corsa utility and then later the Chevrolet utility and then the last gen before GM left in 2017, the sport versions or the, even the SE versions of the MP200, yeah. they were everywhere. People were tuning them. They were never used as their intended purpose. They were modified to death and back. Well, and it was a sort of a... Can I, can I say it was sort of a styling statement? I mean, if you drove a Opel Corsa slash Chevrolet Corsa utility and it was a sport version, there was nothing um, extra power or whatever about it. It was just aesthetics. You were top of the pile. You were in. Well, I can tell you, I had a yellow Corsa Bucky with a very modified 2-liter turbocharged Opel motor that six familiar. Six speed yeah. gearbox, yeah. six speed box, sixteen inch wheels. Um, it was bright yellow. It looked cool, and that was many twenty odd years ago. Mm. But it was a car those days. Cape a little half tonner. Yeah, you could drill the then E thirty six M three something silly with it. Yeah, you know. So yes, you're right. That's exactly those Nissan Buckies were known for drag racing and still and to this day. The Bantams and the Rustlers, the little champs are still running around today. So. I still feel those guys miss this segment the most. It was almost an aspirational thing when yeah. you bought it. I mean, when I was growing up a couple of hundred years ago, it was something that I personally wanted. I really wanted a Corsa mm. Utility 1.8 um, Sport or a 1.7 mm. diesel. Nobody wanted the 1.4, though they were probably the most that were sold. But that's what everybody wanted because you don't necessarily want it a full-size bucky. A Hilux, a D-Max, uh, whatever. You didn't want it because that was spot on. And I yep. mean, my when I came into this industry in 2016, my first official launch was the Nissan MP200 Ice, which was a limited yeah. edition version, the last special edition MP200. And there was a couple of them before the Loaded and there was the um, the Stealth yeah. as well. So it's, it's a sad moment and it was very much a, a aesthetic Great. thing. And... You got the aesthetics and you got the looks and the, the aspirational aspect, but it wasn't a, a mundane, full-ton, single-cab bucky. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, so just moving forward, um, Stellantis yesterday, uh, they showcased a few of their products for us um, at Gerotech here, which is coming, which included now the first uh, single-cab uh, Land Trek. Bucky and the lower spec double cab and they announced uh, their plans obviously uh, it's not news that they are going to build the, the land track over there in the, the they, they setting up the facility as we speak they say end of next year tooling and um, maybe first production models I think early 2026 so we were just talking about it um, uh, the, the, the Fiat Strada, which is still one of those half tonners, yeah. um, we were talking about it in end of next year. You said, Charles, that's that's destined to become a world model again. It is under the Stellantis umbrella, of course. Yeah. They could always, they haven't denied it, but they haven't confirmed it either. They could always, maybe, that's part of their plan because they, they've got very ambitious uh, numbers. They say they're going to want to build 50,000 land tracks there a year, of which 40% must be for local sales. That makes it 20,000. It's very hard to see one tonners grabbing that type of market share off the bat. So that's why we're thinking... Could it be they sneak in a strata there, Shaw? They Did, might. Would that work? Yeah. To be blunt, and I think we spoke about this um, last year somewhere, there really hasn't been any demand for a Peugeot land track in brutal all honesty. And I honestly, as I said before, they're trying to do what I think Nissan did by localizing Navara, by making the Navara here. Um, and it sales were up for, for a little bit with the Navara, but then they tapered down a bit. So... Um, I think that that target, as you mentioned, is very, very ambitious. But they might sneak in um, Strada because Strada, the ones that was previously sold in South Africa, were world models. Then the current one, now that received a facelift last year, was a left-hand drive-specific model. But it's going to certain markets in Africa. And Fiat did so, Stellantis did say, that the next generation Strada, around about at that time, will again become a world model, so it will have right-hand drive. So 
there's something brewing because those figures, there's no one, I don't want to be unkind to Stellantis, but there's no way that you're going to sell that amount of land tracks with the current, what it's mm. currently is an imported um, model. They have to do something radical. And a half ton is the only way because I don't think a car like, or the bucky like the Fiat Toro, which is a mm. step above mm. the Strada, will work. Mm. And neither will the Fiat Titano, which is a rebadged mm. uh, land track. So maybe, mm. we'll maybe have it. Maybe they can occupy that um, segment once more now and become the only player. Fiat Strada, uh, the mark not as cool as the Corsa, but uh, maybe some oaks there in your neck of the woods do something with it. It might, mm. might pip it to gnarly, you know, you never mm, know. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that, I mean. Anything's possible over there, I mean. Oh, listen, on the East Rand, you know, nothing but nothing on planet Earth <laughs> is faster than a Mark 1 Golf. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's a space the Strada will play in, you know, I don't know. But yeah, it's a tough sell, I'm sorry. Land track hasn't done well. If they haven't changed anything, people view it as too expensive, whatever. So they're going to push those ambitious numbers. I don't know where they're going to sell them. They might need a little rabbit out the hat and the strata because there's nothing there. It could work. Yep. Okay. But once that happens, and if it happens, uh, we'll keep you posted as always. Um, if you like this podcast, you can go and click on the like, please. And you can also decide to... Um, Follow the Citizens uh, YouTube channel and then you can be tuned in every week for this. Thank you very much for listening to this week's edition. I'm Jakob van der Merwe. I was joined by Mark Jones and Charles Bosch.